Okay, ready for this? Yeah. Affirmations always work. <laughs> you don't believe me? <laughs> Affirmations always work. Have you experienced that? Affirmations always work. I am skinny. I am skinny now. I am effortlessly skinny. See? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll have the camera and Photoshop out the. Uh... <laughs> so this is an important thing to remember in, in, in EFT. Affirmations always work, and the affirmation I'm making is, I am effortlessly skinny. That's what my voice is saying. My subconscious is saying, in your dreams. <laughs> and that's the affirmation that works. I double my income this year. And then your subconscious is saying, yeah, right. It works. That little voice, and that's what's called in EFT, the tail ender. So we have the content of the affirmation we think we're saying. What Top Dog says, you should do this. This is what the way things should be. Then we have the tail ender, which is that little voice at the end saying, huh. You think so, do you? <laughs> and that's the real affirmation. That's the real affirmation. That's why I say affirmations always work. Because the real affirmation is, right, sure, I don't think so. And that little voice of doubt in our head is right there. So the affirmation is really effective. It's just that we've got that tail ender. Those are things you can nail with EFT. And so you listen for those tail enders. And when you hear them, you tap on them. So that voice that says, I don't think so. Even though I don't think, I can do this. So think of a goal now that you might meet with EFT. Think of something you might do if you were to release the emotional resistance to doing it. So just make up one. Think of some goal in your life that if you could drop your emotional resistance, you'd be able to effortlessly accomplish that goal and then state it in the positive and notice what comes up for you as a resistance. I will have no trouble doing this and then part of you says, well I always have before. So we tap on that. Even though it's impossible to meet my weight loss goal, even though it's impossible to meet my financial goal, even though it's impossible to retire, even though it's impossible to Blah, 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 blah. The endless self-doubt you have chattering away in your head. Mine sits on my left shoulder usually. It's, little, it's like a little demon sitting there saying, I don't think so. Never going to work. Like I'll, I'll have a whole room full of physicians or psychotherapists and I'll, I'll have people on stage and I'll do a demonstration of EFT. And the whole time I'm doing the demonstration, this little demon saying, it's not going to work. You're about to embarrass yourself in front of all these people. And then it works miraculously. It's like, wow, that really worked. It's amazing. So the next person comes up and the demon says, do you think the demons learn anything from this? And the demon now shuts up and we just to get to work? No way, it says, oh, that was a fluke. <laughs> At first it was a fluke, now you're really about to embarrass yourself. And I've done, you know, I've done, probably done 60 medical conferences in the last three years. And the, and the little skeptic's voice is still there saying, now that skeptic's voice is there for a reason. It thinks it's helping keep us safe. It's helping keep us from harm. It's helping us not get in over our head. So those tail enders are there to protect us. That's why I keep on saying to you, say, I give thanks for this pain. I give thanks for this trauma. I give thanks for this emotion that, because it's been keeping me safe all these years. So you tap on those things and release them. You don't try and suppress them or say, oh no, I can't think it about myself. It's contradicting my, my affirmation. In fact, when you say an affirmation like, I'd like to see my income rise, even though we're in the middle of a terrible recession. When part of you says that, when part of your psyche makes that affirmation, every part of your psyche that does not agree with it jumps up and says, hey, what about me? Uh, uh, uh. 
In fact, if part of your psyche gets attention, if you, if, 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 what, if this voice in your head that wants to make the income, the extra income, says that, and you give it attention, you're giving attention to one voice in your head, and soon the other voices say, gee, that voice is getting all the attention. I want to share the attention too, so I'll speak up as well. So the moment you declare an intention, everything in you that does not believe that pops up and says, hey, what about me? And those are tail enders. Those are the tail enders of affirmation. And that's why we have such trouble often meeting our goals, because our affirmations are great. They're in present tense. They have emotional impact. They're in real time. But those little voices that are skeptics and doubters pop up and say, in your dreams, I don't think so, you can't do that. And so we tap on those. So you just find that little tail ender and say, even though it's impossible, everyone around me is going under financially, how could I possibly make more money? Uh, even though my clients are diminishing even though my investment's going down, even though my 401k is now a 201k, <laughs> I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though there's all this evidence to suggest that my aspirations to myself are ridiculous, I accept myself. I accept every voice in my head. I accept every part of myself. I accept the doubting voice in my head. I accept the affirmative voice in my head. I accept all those old voices saying, you can't do this, you don't deserve love. All the good men are taken. All the good women are taken. There are no good jobs out there. People are clinging to their jobs if they have a job. Both people who still have jobs are clinging to their job. There's no job for me. It's hard to get new clients. I don't deserve this. And you'll say something sometimes, and you'll be, you'll be trying to make an affirmation, and part of you is saying, I don't believe it. All these parts pop up. So those are the parts of you not to suppress, but to love. Tap on them, love them. Say thank you for helping keep me safe all this time. Thank you for doing your best to stop me walking over the edge of a cliff. But I'm grown up now. I don't need you anymore. And I can release you. So tail enders, really important. When you make an affirmation, you say something, listen to the tail ender. Oh, actually, Bob. Bob said something after half a seminar of mine a while back. And um, I, uh, I've told the story to people, Bob, when you weren't in the room. So I'll tell them that when you are in the room. <laughs> and it was, it was a <laughs> wonderful moment. And uh, we'd had a half, like the first hour of a seminar I was doing, and Bob was there, and it was the first seminar of mine he'd ever been to. And uh, so everyone was having a great time, but Bob came to me after an hour on the break and said, Dawson, I can't believe it. You're dealing with all this negative stuff. All you're talking about to people is their negative emotions and their problems. When do we get to the positive stuff? And uh, that is a question people often ask about EFT. We've spent, at this point, the whole of the first day, and we've spent half of the second day, and I haven't said to you, let's tap on, I'm going to double my income. I'm going to you know, find the love of my life. I'm going to uh, get the, the home I desire. I'm going to overcome this health problem. I haven't said any of those things. All we've tapped on, and Bob, you were appalled at all the, the negative statements I was having people dredge up. I mean, the expression on your face is normally this is one smiling, happy guy. But he came to me just <laughs> looking, because in that, that, in, that, in that particular kind of workshop, I put uh, a whiteboard up, actually two or three whiteboards up, and have people write down every conceivable negative thing buried in their subconscious. And then we tap on, even though all women are dot, 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 all men are, all the good jobs are, all the money is, you know, we tap on all the stuff and release the emotional charge behind all those things. So why do we deal in negative emotions? And the, and the reason we, we focus on this with EFT is that we're trying to emphasize the negative or build up the negative in our lives. The reason is because you cannot install positive emotions and affirmations 
on top of negative ones that are rooted deep in your psyche. No matter how often you say, I am whole, perfect, and complete, if parts of you don't believe it, they will drag you down. So top dog is saying, I am whole, perfect, and complete, and underdog is saying, ha, ah, you're a mess. <laughs> so we're affirming all these things, and deep in our gut, we know that they aren't true. That voice of doubt is there. So if you try and just say the positive emotion and make the positive affirmation without dealing with all the stuff below, Shakespeare in Hamlet says, it doth but skin and film the ulcerous place, whiles rank corruption, actually the, the John Gilgut version is, it doth but skin and film the ulcerous place, whilst rank corruption mining all within infects unseen. So, uh, the Shakespearean version is. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> While rank corruption mining all within infects unseen. So it doth but skin and film the ulcerous place. They've known this for years. Shakespeare knew this, that you can't just skin and film over this thing and say, it's all going to look nice. Uh, and so often, for example, in work relationships, you may have conflicts. And in personal relationships, with your children, with your parents, you have these things. And it's papering it over. People get used to doing that. You know, put on a happy face. Smile. Look cheerful. And yet where people are suffering inside, and you've got to go there and deal with that feeling of suffering and despair and doubt and hurt and pain. And you just got to tap through it. And if you just stick with it, feel it, rather than suppress and deny it, eventually you process it. And there's some kind of big shift that happens. And that's when you start installing the positive. Where there are no more tail enders sabotaging your affirmation, then you can say the positive affirmation and have it ring true. And suddenly your whole body is saying, yes, 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 yes. All the voices in you are in alignment or in, in agreement because none of them are being suppressed anymore. So suddenly you have a whole person that is advocating and wanting this change, not just one or two or three bits, while all the rest of the chorus is saying, no, nah, we're going to sabotage this good intention. There's a wonderful phrase from NLP called congruence, being congruent. If I were talking to you now and I didn't believe what I say, I could be a really convincing speaker and a really good speaker, but you'd listen to me and you'd think, something's off about that. You know, you'd be able to tell if there was doubt or if I didn't really believe in this, if I was trying to scam you in some way. Uh, I might be really convincing, really good salesman, but you'd see something in my gestures, my body language, my voice. You, you'd feel there's something wrong. But when all the parts of you are really in alignment, I'm talking to you now, and you can tell I, I really believe this, you know. So I'm able to share this with you because all the bits of me are in the game. Parts of me aren't sitting on the sidelines saying, oh, I don't think so. So when you honor those voices, when you really process all of those negative emotions, and suddenly, at some point, all of you believes who you are and what you're doing in life, and you come across with power. There is real power, there's authenticity, and there's personal power that pours through your gestures. And suddenly, the things that you want and the things that you affirm happens. I am very, very careful about what I say I want. Because life will give you a Funny example, I have, a, I have a really beautiful car at home. I have a Mercedes 380 SEC. It's a 1981 Mercedes, and it's gold, leather interior, beautiful car. And I realized that at some point in my travels, I, I saw those cars, and I love those cars. I wanted one of those cars. So for years, I, I wanted one of those cars. About seven or eight years ago, I on a road I drive across recent, uh, a lot, every, every few months, there was one of those cars, this, the right color, perfectly, uh, the, right, the right model, um, right in my line of vision as I would drive this particular stretch of road. And this owner of this, uh, it was actually a cabinet shop, had parked this car behind his cabinet shop, and um, I talked to him a couple of times. He had the car for sale. 
And the car had, uh, had some kind of electrical, it wouldn't start for some reason. So uh, he was willing to sell it maybe, you know, at some point. But he was attached to the car. And so over about the course of about two years, I talked to this guy every once in a while about the car. And uh, he wanted $2,000 for the car. That it wasn't in running condition and it was too much, so I didn't buy the car. So one day, I get a call from the guy, and he said, oh, you know, you know my car, you want, you want my car? And he was clearly smoking dope at the time. It's <laughs> like, oh, I, that car might be what it is. He said, oh, bring your tow truck at 200 bucks and it's yours. So I was there within an hour or <laughs> with a tow truck, towed the car away, and you know, suddenly I had this car. And it turned out to be a very simple fix to fix the electrical problem, and I drove the car for a while. But the car had other problems, I discovered. It had an air conditioning problem. It had a radiator problem. And it had uh, a problem with the audio system. And, it had, and the tinting was falling off the, wall, off, off the windows. And you needed a new paint job after a while, and blah, 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 blah. This car became the bane of my life. <laughs> And I'd eventually spent like four times on the car what the car was worth. And today, today as I speak, that car is sitting in my backyard. It hasn't been driven for a year. It's just like covered in a tarp. I would just want to not even see the car. I got what I wanted. <laughs> but it was yesterday's dream. It wasn't today's dream. It was a dream I had in 1981 when the 1981 Mercedes 380C came out. It was a state-of-the-art car, OK? I forgot to update my dream. <laughs> I, and I tend, if I set my mind on something, it's amazing. It'll just show up in my life. So I'm very, very careful about what I intend nowadays, because with, with congruent intentions, when you're congruent and you intend something, it'll show up. But it may not be your highest good. Now I tend to pray for the universe's highest good for me to show up, not my limited conception of it, because what I can perceive down here and what I think I want is often not the highest good for all. So I've learned to really let go and know that when I create, it's powerful and things are going to happen. Yeah? Maybe we need affirmation lawyers to write up the <laughs> <laughs> So really watching your affirmation. So, um, so you clear away all the undergrowth. You clear away all of the other voices in your head. You clear away all the dissenting voices. You help them heal. You don't suppress them. You don't deny them. You don't put them down. You let them be. You give thanks for them. And after a while, you have enormous power behind your affirmations. So let's just go and do some more tapping on, on tail enders. Think of an affirmation of yours, your, yours personally, that has a tail ender. And somebody tell me what their tail ender is. If somebody's We're not, good We're not, good not good enough. OK, good. And what do you want? What, what's an affirmation? <laughs> Whatever I want, I'm not good enough. Whatever I want, I'm not good enough. Let's, let's work on that. Come up to the okay. frontier. Oh, you want to come to the frontier? Is that okay? I don't. I don't care, but it, yeah, I can't see without my glasses. That's okay, Georgia. Um, Where do I need to see? <clears throat> 